What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P. And when you think of your favorite peripherals, odds are it is a wired mouse or keyboard. And that's because wireless peripherals are often looked down upon for not being as quick or as accurate or they're dealing with an issue when it comes to, you know, latency. Especially when it comes to online gaming or, you know, competitive FPS shooters. But recently, over the past few years, and more specifically over the past few months, companies have been putting their best foot forward when it comes to delivering great products for you while cutting the cord. And today, Logitech is hitting us with two new gaming peripherals that are completely wireless and intended for online gaming. We have the new Logitech G603 wireless gaming mouse and the G613 wireless gaming keyboard two great options out there that are wireless however they come at a cost so are they worth it first let's talk about the wireless mouse the g603 now i've been using the g502 pro d score for the past two plus years so i'd say i'm a pretty big fan of logitech's mice taking this one out of the box i was really surprised at how simple it was no extra bells and whistles yes that means no rgb lights just a solid philly mouse that looks just like their g703 and i do like the black and dark slate color choice here we do have a new and improved sensor and some buttons on the bottom, which I'll talk about in a minute, but it definitely left me with a good first impression. Now, one thing to bring up real quick is the front gray plate slides off, and this is where the two included AA batteries go. Plus, you get to keep the wireless USB receiver in here so you don't lose it if you're traveling. Inside the box, they also include for you a USB extension cord for the receiver if you need the connectivity to be a little bit closer to you while you're gaming or if your PC is farther away. So with this receiver, you can use this over a wireless connection or via Bluetooth, which is built in. And on the bottom of the mouse is how you connect and pair it. The button on the right will light up blue for Bluetooth or white for the wireless receiver connection. Then on the left side is where it gets interesting. You see off, low, and high. Low is just for standard usage, you know, browsing the internet. It reports at 8 milliseconds with a 125 hertz report rate. And high, that's what you want for gaming. It reports at 1000 hertz with a 1 millisecond response time. You can't beat that. So if you're gaming, keep this mouse on the high setting. So let's talk to battery life then. And on that low setting, Logitech claims an 18th month battery life for this. And that is just crazy. I'll have to report to you guys back in a few months and if that's true or not. But that's still pretty nuts just for, you know, internet browsing and stuff like that. That's a long time. And on the high setting, you're supposed to be getting 500 hours of non-stop gaming, which is still a really long time. And that's great for a wireless mouse. While it does seem kind of like too much, that's actually, you know, that's kind of the case because with their new sensor inside this mouse, they also helped greatly improve the battery life, which is why this new sensor was such a big deal to Logitech. So we have this new and improved Hero sensor in the G603 Lightspeed mouse, an upgrade over the previous PixArt sensors they've been using for the past few years. It is the next generation sensor for Logitech and can go up to 12,000 DPI. On the top of the mouse, you do have a DPI button for switching it up on the fly, and you can have five different DPI sensitivity levels set within the software, and they're represented by different colored lights on the top of the mouse as well. So now let's switch gears and talk about the G613 wireless gaming keyboard. This is what I was most psyched to check out because I mean, how many wireless keyboards are actually usable for competitive online gaming or FPS? And right out of the box, this thing is solid. It's the full keyboard layout here. You have six macro buttons on the left side as well. It's all one unit with this included wrist rest on the bottom. There very solid, I'm definitely liking it. Like the mouse, this keyboard is powered by two AA batteries housed on the bottom side of the keyboard and again along with the USB receiver, it's all underneath. And to turn it on, there was this little switch on the right side of the keyboard and you're up and running. On top is a little battery level indicator and you guessed it, it'll also last up to 18 months. Also on top of these little buttons for disabling the Windows button, you have your wireless and Bluetooth connection buttons there. You have some volume controls as well as dedicated media buttons all in these little circles and squares. And to me personally, I would have preferred buttons like on their previous Logitech keyboards. I'm just not the biggest fan of these little plastic keys. I mean, they just, I don't know, they feel kind of cheap to me, these little circles and stuff. But in the end, really, it's not a big deal it's just for, you know, your media and volume control and stuff like that. And also inside the box, they include a phone stand for you. Sure. I mean, it's a nice gesture, sure. It's cool they included it, but it's really not that necessary, I don't think. They used to have the little phone dock built in some of their older gaming keyboards on some models. This time it's its own dedicated stand with the Logitech branding on it. You also have a rubber pad on the bottom side so it doesn't slide around on your desk. 
I don't know, I'm kind of impartial to this because yeah, I can have my phone next to my keyboard on a stand so I can see the notifications within this Logitech ecosystem, but it's like I'm still paying for it in the end with the production costs, so I don't know. Then moving on before we get into the real important stuff in my testing, I promise. I mentioned earlier we have these six macro buttons, which is always nice for a gaming keyboard to have. So it's cool to see that we have that here. And yes, we still have those Logitech Roamer G switches. They are mechanical and feel very similar to any like an emulated red mechanical switch, also requiring 45 grams of force to actuate and an actuation travel distance of 1.5 millimeters. So yeah, very much like reds. And with these Romer G switches, you don't have that stem in the middle. You have this more of a hollowed out tube structure like we've seen before. You can actually see inside the spring buckling down with each key press as it actuates. Typically here's where you would have the RGB light shining up as well. But like I said, there is none of that this time around. Just they hold down to the PCB. And yes, I will do a sound test for you so you can hear how the Romer G switches sound. So now for the goods, my testing and experience. What are the main problems when it comes to wireless gaming peripherals? Logitech says latency, connectivity, power, and weight. Well, for connectivity, we have the wireless receiver or Bluetooth, so they gave us those two options. Power, they nailed it with their new sensor in that crazy improved battery life. Weight could be a little bit of an iffy point here because the mouse does use those AA batteries and it is a little bit heavier than I'm used to, but nothing detrimental to my testing or my time adjusting to it. And then the big one is latency. So I did some testing with an input lag tester and my Corsair K95 Platinum keyboard and I found on average the time it takes for me to fully depress a key down and back up again is 53 milliseconds. I then compared that to the G613 and I found that actually the average with this was 47 milliseconds. And whether that test was fully accurate in terms of the given millisecond timing, it's kind of hard to say because they both claim a one millisecond report rate and you have to factor in things like, you know, internet latency and your monitor response time for gaming. So the testing was more so just for me to see whether or not the Logitech G613 was noticeably slower than my wired keyboard. And it wasn't, so that is incredibly awesome to see. Like, think about it. A wireless gaming keyboard is now just as effective as a wired one. And for people who tossed that idea out of their head in the past for competitive online gaming, they now have an option on the market. One other major bonus to wireless gaming is your desk space. This is my current setup before testing and all that, you know, the K95 Platinum keyboard wired with the wired G502 mouse. And you know, I have them routed kind of neatly throughout the grommet hole in the middle of my desk. And you compare that to a fully wireless setup here and yeah, that looks much, much better. Eliminating cables is always a plus on a desk setup. So what about the mouse then? Well, wireless mouse, they have been getting increasingly more accurate over the years, especially with their G900 Chaos Spectrum that launched and the more recent G703 wireless mouse. But you know, they definitely kind of caught up to the wired equivalent and that is no different here. So is it true, Random Frank P, are these wireless gaming peripherals just as accurate or just as precise as a wired gaming mouse or keyboard? And I'm gonna say yes. Logitech did an outstanding job. I'll admit I was kind of skeptical as well. But once I, you know, played some games, I found that there was really no like downfall. There was no, you know, decrease in my gaming at all. It felt just like I was using my peripherals from the past that were wired. Now, when I said earlier it comes at a price, it comes at a hefty price because the G613 keyboard, even though it doesn't have RGB lights or anything like that, this is $150. And yes, that is kind of expensive. It's kind of too expensive if you ask me, but these will sell. Think about it. People who do want a reliable wireless keyboard that is no different than a wired keyboard for online gaming, 
they will buy this for that price point. And I think in the end, it is justified. However, if we could ditch this thing and save like 10 bucks, that'd be cool too. And the G603, this is, I believe, $69.99, which isn't that bad either. Again, for a wireless gaming mouse, that's kind of on par with the other ones in the market. And in terms of my pros and cons for all these, other the the one con for the keyboard being the price point, like I said earlier, I wasn't a big fan of those uh, little tactile media key buttons up here. They just feel kind of cheap to me. And the other only con I'll mention for the mouse, and it's not big at all, it is just a little bit heavier than I'm used to. I have pretty average hands, and I use mostly like a palm grip on this. So it took me some time to adjust to the newer weight compared to my G502. But again, with the batteries and then improved uh, battery life, overall adjusting to the weight was a big deal so this is some great stuff from logitech i'm very happy i'm very impressed and hopefully we're going to be seeing more wireless gaming peripherals where you don't have to you know compensate or you know factor in losing out on any of that latency or anything like that you know what i'm saying i'm really digging this stuff i'll put a link for you guys in the description down below in case you want to check it out that's going to wrap it up so if you like this review give it a thumbs up to show your support Feel free to follow me on Twitter at RandomFrankP. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Well, I'm RandomFrankP. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.